Good morning and happy Mother's Day. This morning I'm going to read to you from John 15 verses 1 to 9. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Hello. So we thought that this vo this verse um, section would be appropriate to share in our new orchard. We moved about two weeks ago now, and uh, so we thought we would share that with you. Uh, hopefully, you can hear some of the birds in the in the background. Um, the verse is appropriate in terms of the trimming of the branches and whatnot. And the tree behind us is a the perfect example of it. Um, the caretaker of it at one point trimmed uh, my left uh, a portion of the tree off that was not bearing any fruit anymore. Um, you'll see to the right which would be the original part of the tree it's still bearing uh, a lot of fruit. Then at some point he did find uh, take a nice piece from another tree and grafted it. So what you see behind us is a result of there's a apricot to the right and plum to the left. Uh, he, that vine of the plum took, it is uh, producing again and, uh, and flourishing. Um, that's kind of our take on it. And in this, in this day and time right now and what we're going through, it, you can take something that is not doing well and, and make the best of it. And that's, that's what we need to do right now. So yes, happy Mother's Day and enjoy the service. confess bowing here I find my rest without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you
Today is Mother's Day, and we want to acknowledge all the women we're blessed to know. We rejoice over you, for your strength, your wisdom, your strong love, and your beautiful faith. Whether today is a celebration for you or a day of quiet reflection and healing, we're thinking of all of you. If you gave birth this year to your first child, our joy overflows and we celebrate with you. If you adopted a child this year or became a foster parent, we rejoice with you and we want to honor you in your commitment to changing the lives of children. If you continue to struggle with infertility, we are hoping with you and holding your hand in prayer. If you are exhausted and feeling underappreciated for all you do for a house full of kids, we applaud you. We love you and we appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. And if you lost a child this year to death or miscarriage, we weep and mourn with you. And if your child is lost to addiction or to the world, we hurt with you and we join you in putting our hope in the one who brings prodigals home. If you live with painful memories of your mom, we pray that you will find in a spiritual mother all that you never had from a birth mom. And if you're one of those amazing spiritual moms, we thank you for stepping up and being there when others couldn't. If you're experiencing an empty nest for the first time this year, we walk with you in this new season and are excited about the next chapter God has planned for you. If you're single, we celebrate your strength beauty and individuality, and join with you in praying for the desires of your heart. If you're a single mom and wonder if you have the physical energy and financial resources to raise and provide for your child or children, we want to help you, and we will. And if you're pregnant for the first time, we prayerfully anticipate with you the joyful birth of a healthy child. And to all the special women on this Mother's Day, rest and delight in knowing that we are thankful for you and we celebrate each and every one of you.
Wow, what an awesome morning already. Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms. It is so good to connect today. Brandon and Christy, beautiful welcome from your new digs. Nice, nice tree, guys. Craig Hogue, daughter Allie Chambers, Brielle Anger, Nate Cunningham, thank you so much for music this morning. We appreciate it so much. And special guest and one of ours, Elizabeth and Karen Bonasteel, awesome music. What a morning already. Incredible. Thank you all. Now, I really did miss working with the gang in the kitchen, getting the Mother's Day breakfast ready. Tom and Walter and Jochen and Ivan and all the rest of you men that helped out getting things ready. It's been a long time since we haven't had a Mother's Day breakfast around here. Well, just a couple of thoughts. Um, check your e-bulletin as you go along for details from our recent church board leadership team meeting uh, via Zoom media um, on May 5th. Um, incredible. April offerings above our set budget needs. Um, the word is out there that I've heard, and I so appreciate it. It's called pandemic grace. Um, sometimes we find ourselves flying by the seat of our pants and doing all that we're doing. And you, my friends, continue to show grace to us, to me as your pastor. Thank you for that. Thank you for your trust and your support during these challenging times. Now, this morning, it is my privilege to introduce our guest speaker to you. In 1987, well, 1987 was a beautiful year. Late January of that year, uh, a bundle of love by the name of Katie Ruth graced our family, joining Laura and adding to our family. When Katie was in grade seven, she wrote a poem and just one line stood out. And this is our daughter, Katie, that you'll hear from in a moment. I am a strong no, I am an independent woman who plays basketball. And our girl has been that. Katie Droppert married Josh. She's a mother to Elsie and Beatrice, a daughter to Liz and myself, a granddaughter to Gert and to Ruth. She's a teacher by training, a friend to so many, and a girl who makes her father so very proud. Enjoy the message that God has laid on her heart to share with you this morning, this Mother's Day. This is my daughter, our middle child, Katie Ruth Droppert. Good morning. Um, I am Katie, Brian and Liz's daughter. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there. Uh, what a blessing it is as a woman to be called to get to be called mom or to those of you who are lucky enough to be called grandma or aunt or all of the bonus moms or special friends out there. Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, my girls have been busy lately playing a lot and their a favorite game at our house has been princesses. Um, the only problem is that they insist that one of them has to be the servant and it often ends in a fight. And so then they uh, will come and ask me um, if I will be the servant. So when I inquire what, uh, what that role entails, I am usually told that it, the servant cooks and cleans and does things for the princesses. So I conclude that I can continue doing basically what I'm doing. And so I agree to do it and, and I ensure I point out to them that it sounds like what I always do. Um, but isn't this the truth, moms? Uh, what a joy it is to have people to cook and clean for, even when we uh, don't always feel like it. Uh, I encourage you, uh, moms, to keep going in this pursuit, and I pray that Christ will fill you uh, as to be able to live Christ-like in your willingness to, to think less of yourself and more of those around you, even three months into isolation as it is now. Uh, Pastor Anley Stanley says, your greatest contribution may not be something you do, but someone you raise. And I think these are such simple yet profound words. And so moms, grandmas, aunts, special friends, 
keep this in mind as you invest your time and energy into the future. Um, I've heard it joked recently that Mother's Day uh, is was going to be canceled, although it's not, but that but that we will be out of quarantine just in time for Father's Day. Um, so I had to firmly remind my husband that Mother's Day isn't canceled this year. It just looks different, and teachers won't be sending home the homemade gifts. Um, when my dad asked me to share a bit of my story for Mother's Day, I didn't quite agree to this format, but because I love my dad, I couldn't say no. And uh, when he texted me telling me he was still planning on me sharing. So um, I know today looks different for everyone, and for many of you this may feel hard, and just a reminder of the loneliness that this season can bring um, and how much we miss our loved ones. So I just I pray that God would comfort you today and that you would feel loved and um, appreciated no matter what today looks like uh, for you. Um, so before I share a little bit about my story, I, I need to share a little bit about my mom because I have a great mom and she has lots of good stories to share about. So um, my mom likes to remind us that she spent the first several years at home with us before she started back into the working world. As children are known to do, we don't quite always um, appreciate those sacrifices. We often refer to the fun memories we have with dad instead. Um, being in the same stage, uh, having two littles at home right now, I definitely can appreciate the sacrifice she made for us in those early years. She's always really loved us. As I think about my mom, that is what stands out the most. There's a quote by the late American poet Maya Angelou that says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. This quote describes my mom so well. We have had lot, plenty of good chats and she's passed on wisdom, but I'm confident of the love that she had for us and how she made us feel valued, appreciated, loved, accepted, and confident to be who we are. Our role early on is to make children feel safe in this world. And my mom knows how to make anyone feel safe and accepted. My children now uh, get to benefit from that in their circle. Um, from baking chocolate chip banana muffins for us to devour in a few hours, having regular phone chats after moving out, reading to her grandchildren, and being sure no one ever leaves her presence hungry. Her desire to nurture and love her family is strong. Um, so a few just stories about her. She's directionally challenged, is always getting lost. No matter if we drove to Niagara Falls or Camp Kakwa, you could bet we'd be driving in circles with her frustrated trying to find her way back. Uh, the night I left the hospital after Elsie was born, my first daughter, she, was, she left ahead of us and was to go to Laura's, my sister's, before she came to my house. So she never showed up at Laura's house. And when I called Laura to, just to see how things were going and let her know that we were on our way, uh, we were panicked because we didn't know where she was. And then as I drove past the, the 406 off-ramp in St. Catharines, it, uh, the road was closed for an emergency. <laughs> and so we both, um, at this point, were emotional and worried, not knowing what had happened. And then when I got home, she was just sitting in my driveway because she couldn't find her way across town uh, to Laura's house and had just been sitting there for an hour. And so it's funny now, but it, uh, it was not so funny and just a, she's just really bad at directions. <laughs> um, she ensures we hear stories of her being called my dad's daughter as many times as possible. So if you'd like to make her day, be sure to point out how uh, youthful and beautiful she is. She easily will tell the same story five times as she has to make sure every new person to join the conversation has heard every detail. She also really loves her gardens. She can't get rid of excess plants, so she somehow convinces my dad to add more gardens, and then she finds treasures um, from roadside pickups or uh, road trips, and she's actually brought home um, lobster traps from the East Coast and a fake palm tree all the way from Florida at the expense of the, the body room in the car. Um, and, she, and then she ensures that every time we visit her, we get the latest tour to see the progress on her gardens. And in this season right now, we uh, currently get lots of photos to see, see how that is going. She really loves to garden. 
Um, even better than she was as a mom, she's the greatest grandma. Even if we do tease her about her lack of routine as she keeps our children up way past bedtime and makes them whatever they desire. Recently, when she had our girls overnight, she started watching the sound of music with them at 7.30 at night, which is in fact their bedtime. You can imagine that our girls quite enjoy getting to go for sleepovers at grandma's. We have settled that it's worth the chaos after when our children are tired and grumpy because their hearts are full and we will happily take the break. She really loves her grandchildren so well though, and they look forward to all of the time they get to spend with her adventuring in her backyard. Um, she's also one of the most adventurous and brave women I know. She's the first to jump in the pool each year and has convinced us to go whitewater rafting and skiing on many skiing adventures, much to my dad's demise. I can remember her being saran wrapped to a tree at the end of Niagara camp one year. She laughed it off and apparently she had earned her place on the tree with the pranks she had pulled in the days prior. She's been thrown into a pool too many times to count. Uh, many of these times were at evening church at the, in the Mater's pool, um, in summer evening church growing up. She was known in our high school days for bringing uh, the, her cowbell to cheer for us at our sporting events or whistling with four, her four fingers louder than anyone I've ever met. Um, I will certainly never be half as brave and as a, I will certainly never be half as brave and adventurous as she is, but I can see her free spirit in my daughters, so I brace myself for the road ahead. They, they have already jumped into our pool at the end of April, and they were wishing that Grandma was there with them to join. Um, one of the greatest blessings for me during this season of social distancing, though, has been chatting with my mom and knowing how refreshed she's been by the time she gets to be at home and take care of my grandma. She's able to care for people and check in on people the way that she can't always do. And um, it just has been beautiful to see uh, her nurturing uh, side come through and because um, it is just who she is, committed to her family and others, and uh, she really thinks about her own needs. Sometimes she needs to do that a little more. I just keep going back to reflecting on how well she loves her people. If the most important thing I have learned from her is to love others well, then I think she's taught me uh, the key to a fulfilling life. My daughter Elsie came home from school last year telling me that joy means Jesus, others, you, and that is how we are to live. So it has become a focus in our home as we aim to love God and our neighbors as uh, commanded of us in scriptures. Matthew 22, 37 to 39 says, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I'm so grateful for the example that my mom and my dad as well have been in loving others well. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. Um, so now to share a little bit about my journey. Um, so I'm married to Josh. We celebrated our 13th anniversary this week. We have two daughters, Elsie, who is five and a half years old, and Beatrice, who is three and a half. They are my three favorite people. Um, I really love being a mom to my girls. I love how happy they are to see me, the sweet cuddles that they give me, uh, the way they love me so well and forgive all my faults their giggles and silliness, um, the way that I can comfort them better than anyone, and that I get to love them with so much intent and purpose. So I've only been a mom for not even six years, so I still have a lot to learn, but it has been the most refining time as I have been forced to place my trust in God when I have felt overwhelmed by the realities of my limitations. Our parenting story started uh, with a struggle with infertility and having to trust that God had a plan for us to be parents. I always dreamed of being a mom and felt heartbroken at the possibility that God's plan for us could be different. This definitely was taxing and emotional as we waited almost two years to get pregnant with our first daughter. God had given me a promise in this season of waiting that gave me hope, but it was still hard to just wait on God's timing. Mother's Days were really hard in that season, as it often reminded me of the great longing that I had to be a mom. Um, it gave me a lot more understanding for others who have dealt with this struggle, as I know there are many whose hearts hurt on days like this, as they are reminded of loss or brokenness. This is where I began to realize my greater need to depend on God when something really was outside of my control. 
So when our beautiful Elsie Jane came in 2014, we were so excited to become parents. I really loved my baby girl, and, um, but I quickly realized that being a mom was nothing like I had imagined. My strong desire for control, order, and predictability made the transition to being a mother really hard. Nothing felt predictable. Everything felt new and difficult. Elsie spent several weeks early on crying for several hours many nights a week, um, and that was so draining and stressful. I tried to control this and find ways to fix this or help her by reading many parenting books and trying many suggestions. Um, I tried to get her on a schedule to help with her or to help with my anxiety. Eventually, she did go on a schedule. It wasn't anything like I imagined or had read about, but I adjusted and it worked for us. She's always been independent and determined to voice her opinion, and this came out strong already as a baby. Again, my desire for control was being tested. As that first year went on, she became more predictable and a lot of fun. We really enjoyed our family, and so we decided to have another child. So in 2016, 11 days before Elsie turned two, we welcomed Beatrice Lou into our family. This time, my baby was so much easier and predictable, but as I adjusted to life with two children, a toddler with strong opinions, and a baby that didn't sleep well at night, things were manageable, but I often felt overwhelmed and anxious trying to balance it all. When Beatrice was nearly four months old, she began refusing to nurse. This was stressful, not knowing if my baby was eating enough, so I decided to wean her, but it felt like a moment of failure for me as I really wanted to nurse her longer. At the same time, Elsie was approaching two and a half, and I felt pressure that I needed to potty train her. Um, my hormones were a mess, and I remember December of 2016 as emotional, dark, and very overwhelming. I was never diagnosed with postpartum anxiety or depression, but there were definitely hormonal imbalances that didn't allow me to just be myself in this season. I tried to be everything. I didn't like that I would be quick to lose my temper with my toddler or husband, that I couldn't push through the exhaustion of being up for hours in the night, as Beatrice has always struggled to sleep through the night. And although she's gotten better, this continues to be a struggle for us. This proved to be a time where my limitations would come out strong as I fought to stay calm and collected while dealing with a child who had been awake from 1 to 3 a.m. and not wanting to go back to bed, and during the day dealing with a toddler who was winning the no nap time transition. I struggled seeing other moms who seemed relaxed and just really enjoying the season when I found it to be hard and not always the most fun. So I learned my limitations and that motherhood was hard. I really love children. I always have. I've always dreamed of being a mom. I just never imagined I would find it so challenging. Part of this is definitely the high expectation I put on myself to be the best for my family, along with my need to control everything. I tend to overthink things, and it felt like there were so many decisions to think about. I struggled with trusting others to take care of my girls because I felt like I was the only one who could do it right. You can imagine this was fun for Josh. I still struggle with this when making decisions about schooling and things that will impact my girls' futures. I'm learning to trust that God loves my girls more than I do, though, and that I don't need to worry, but just I can turn those worries into prayer. So the summer that Beatrice turned one, three years into parenting, I hit a point in my journey where I was struggling. I wasn't finding the joy in Christ that is talked about. I wasn't emulating the fruits of the Spirit in how I treated my family. I remember a conversation about this where I left asking myself why the fruits of the Spirit weren't more evident in my life. Why was I struggling to be patient or joy-filled or find peace in hard moments? When I reflected on this, I realized that I wasn't being filled with the Spirit in my day-to-day -day walk in order to reflect the work of the Spirit. It was also in this time, Elsie, who was about three, started to ask questions about life and God and I felt nervous about whether I could answer them for her. My girls are extremely inquisitive, and I've asked numerous questions that make me pause and wonder why children of that age are asking me this. But I felt convicted in this time that, yes, I am saved by grace. I know I don't have to do anything other than repent and accept God's love in order to attain this grace that Christ died for. But I didn't know my Bible. I didn't feel confident in answering Elsie's hard questions and pointing her to God in a deep and meaningful way. And I didn't want to only be able to provide shallow answers 
for my girls as they grew older and wanted to know more about God. So I started to learn and build a better understanding of God, which also built my trust and relationship with Him. I started with lots of books, but I ultimately ended up in the Bible, just trying to dig deeper into the big story of Scripture and understand how the Gospel transforms everything in light of God's plan for the world. I had read the Bible before, but I found it hard to understand and didn't like really enjoy it. But this time was different. This time everything I found just fascinating and exciting and it was so much easier to engage with and learn. I often point my girls back to the four major themes of the Bible, creation, fall, redemption, and restoration, when we are navigating our day to day. It has helped me make sense of God and his work in us, knowing that we live in a broken world where I cannot be everyone, everything for everyone. I am okay to recognize my limits and bring them to God. I don't have to accomplish this on my own. Being perfect isn't anything we were intended to be. God made us with needs and limits. He wants us to recognize his need for him. Motherhood has brought me to this place. Um, through its challenges, I am so grateful that in my weakness and limitations, God has transformed my heart through a love for his word. I still have a lot to, I desire to learn, um, but I recognize that that can take a lifetime, and that's okay. Uh, when I take time, though, to read God's word, to journal and pray and recognize my limits, then I feel God at work in me and the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are reflected through my actions. This is what I want for my family, not a frazzled mom who's trying to attain everything in my own abilities. I know this is simple. It's something I was taught my whole life. But when my need was deeper, it put a longing in my heart for something more. So I've been doing a study in this time of quarantine on the I am statements um, in John. Jesus speaks the last of his I am statements in John 15 as he speaks with his disciples, preparing them for his final days with them. This passage struck a chord in my heart as I realized this is exactly what Jesus has been at work doing in my heart through motherhood. I didn't realize when I prepared this that my dad was doing a series on the fruits of the Spirit and that he spoke from this same passage a few weeks ago, but I decided to still share it as it, I feel like it's the work of the Spirit and it really testifies to the work of God in my life. So John 15, 1 to 11 says, um, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Uh, th this image of vine or vineyard, uh, which is frequently used in the Old Testament, um, is a, symbolizes Israel, God's covenant people. But here Jesus is telling them that he is the true vine. He is our source and God is the vine dresser, the one who prunes and cultivates the vines. Um, verse 2 says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. I just find this, this so important as pruning is not a gentle process when you think about it on a tree, but it cuts out the bad parts and trims away the parts for growth in order to prepare the, prepare the tree for better fruit production. This is so true to how God works in us. It often hurts and is difficult. This is so descriptive of how God is using motherhood to prune or shape me so I can better bear fruit right now. This is how God can use this season right now to transform or to form us into the people who are less focused on our own needs and better able to bear fruit for those around us. Uh, verse 3 says, Already you are clean because of the, because of the word that I have spoken to you. Um, they had put their trust in Jesus, whose death now has cleansed our sins. Um, four, verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I love the word abide. John uses it frequently in his writing. Um, it simply means to continue in a daily personal relationship with Jesus. This, this builds our trust and obedience. It brings us to a place of prayer and surrender. And it should ultimately produce the joy that in our lives not found in our circumstances. We cannot bear spirit, spiritual fruit on our own. We need to abide in Jesus, our vine. Theologian Henry Nouwen says it this way, Jesus invites us to abide in his love. That means to dwell with all that I am in him. It is an invitation to a total belonging, to full intimacy, 
to an unlimited being with. The light of the Spirit reveals to us that love conquers all fear. Uh, Verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus is telling us that we can do nothing apart from him. Our works and actions bear no eternal value and don't produce spiritual fruit apart from the source, apart from God and Jesus. So verse 6 says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But this, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Our purpose isn't to accomplish things for our own praise and glory. We were created to glorify God. Um, Verse 9 says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So are you producing fruit in the season you are in? Are you loving one another, like truly loving one another in a Christ-like way? Are you abiding in Christ daily? slowing down, reading God's word, praying and meeting with him, allowing yourself to be known and allowing God to prune you and reveal sin issues that are rooted deeply or show your pride that needs to be humbled so you can bear fruit. I found this so hard in the early stages of motherhood as I didn't feel like I had enough time to spend time daily abiding um, and it, wasn't, it didn't feel like a priority. So as, but as I began to reap the benefits of this time, or I guess bear fruit, it has become much more of a priority. I can do nothing of spiritual significance apart from the vine. In my brokenness and recognition of my limits, God has been so faithful to reveal himself to me and prove to be everything I need. I, we, don't need to be enough or prove ourselves. Our culture pushes the message of independence and being able to do anything if you work hard enough, and it hurts us so much. Even within some Christian culture, there's a push for change attained on our own accord if we follow a few principles or steps to a more fulfilling Christian walk. This misses the whole point. Jesus is the vine. He is our source, and God is doing the pruning. We don't need to attain anything on our own accord. We need to let Jesus be our source and allow God to form us. Jesus has paid the price. The bread has been broken, and we are accepted in our brokenness just as we are. This isn't easy, but life isn't easy. It wasn't intended to be easy. Uh, I I attempted to go back to work as a teacher almost two years ago after feeling just kind of the fatigue from being home and worn out and thinking that maybe I'd enjoy the the day-to-day better, just my time with my girls if I had a little break during the day. Um, This quickly proved to be an error in my judgment. So I realized that it's really hard to be a working mom, just as it's really hard to be a stay-at-home mom. So I decided to return to being at home and working from home um, as it just created a more manageable balance for us. But in this season, it taught me so much just to, to realize that life wasn't intended to be easy and that in our challenges is often where we learn to depend more on God. So to wrap up, I just want to encourage you to um, allow Jesus to be your vine to be your source and let God be the vine dresser to prune and cultivate in order to allow the spirit to produce spiritual fruits through you. Um, Second, to abide daily with Jesus, that daily personal relationship with Jesus. Spend time um, gaining from the source. Accept your limitations. Humble yourself. Allow the spirit to work through you. Don't feel like you have to do it on your own. And just to finally love one another with Christ-likeness and um, bear fruit for those around you. Um, So yeah, that's. I'm just going to end with prayer. And thank you so much for allowing me to uh, share what's on my heart this morning. And um, so Lord, thank you so much for the uh, people of the Port Coburn Church congregation. I pray that you would just bless them today and uh, continue to walk with them, comfort them in this time of uncertainty and unknown. We pray for health and safety over them. 
And Lord, I just pray that they would um, turn to you, that they would truly abide in you and um, want to experience the fullness of relationship, walking closely with you. I pray that you would be their source and um, in this time they would they would see the fruit that is, that is cultivated and produced by the way that you shape us even when things feel hard. Um, I thank you, Lord, for the mothers today and I pray that you would bless them and that they would feel loved and appreciated and valued uh, wherever they are and whatever their circumstances look today. Just thank you, Lord, for mothers and I pray that they would um, be encouraged to just continue on in the pursuit of um, serving their families well and serving those around them well. Thank you so much, God, for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you.